is 32 Flavors by Ani DeFranco. Ani has done a lot of social justice work, so we are excited to share her song with you. Awesome. Between you and your ambition, I am a poster girl with no poster. I'm the buddy to play with in my song, and I'll be on the peripheral vision. So you might want to turn your head, cause someday you are gonna get hungry. Any most of the words you just said. Both my parents taught me about goodwill. Don't wear other names Just the kind of stuff that it's so strangers Is more than I can explain So there's many who turn up their porch lights Just so I would think they were not home And in the dark of the windows Till I pass and left them alone hey -ya, hey -ya. Of course, too pretty is also your doom. Cause everyone harbors a secret hatred for the prettiest girl in the room. And God help you if you're a phoenix and you dare to rise up from the ash. A thousand eyes will smolder with jealousy while you are just flying past. And I've never tried to give my life meaning. By dealing in you And I would like to say for the record I did everything that I could do I'm not saying that I'm a saint I just don't want to live that way No, I will never be a saint But I will always say Squint your eyes and look closer I'm not between you and your ambition I am a poster girl with no poster I am 32 flavors and that's on And I'll be on your peripheral vision Someday you are gonna get hungry And eat most of the words you just said 
Okay, you guys, this next one is a little bit more upbeat, so hopefully, you know, dance if you want to. This is a little poem I wrote called Change Me, and they turned it into a beautiful song, so here we go. Time I write, I get a vision like Wanda. They marvel at my flows from east to west. Are you talking about Akilah? Well, his beats are best, yeah. I get very violent with the stereo, it's every night I make a composition Where's my competition? I know the white folk are probably scared of my religion When I see a sheriff, I get terrified of prison They glare at my complexion, I'm aware of my condition Stare outside a window so they put me on a stimulant Sick of people telling me to leave the house and live a bit Really trying to make it in music, I don't procrastinate Get me on a track, that's when you see me activate Ask about the name, they say he's savage on a breakbeat I improve daily, but you always stay the same Be the best I ever felt was making fans go crazy I don't think that any setback is gonna change me
sorry, slight technical difficulties. One minute. <laughs> before all of us came along. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Oh, now it's 
in the cover of a magazine. Now it's in the words you gotta read between. Now it's on the cover of a magazine. There are pieces to the problem that you haven't seen. Now it's on the cover of a magazine. Now it's in the lives you gotta read between. Now it's on the cover of a magazine. Gruen. I'm a senior at U32, and as happy as I am to be with you all today, I wish we were here for a different reason. I wish we could be here to celebrate, to celebrate each other, to celebrate life, but instead we are here to beg for it, to beg for our right to save ourselves. The work that we are doing today is not easy. It is hard to come together to cry out for reform just to be ignored over and over again by those who are supposed to be representing us. It is hard to stay inspired when our future is in the hands of those who refuse to prioritize us. Our future is in your hands. Do you hear us? Our future is in your hands. I'm going to share a story with you all today. Last summer, I attended the Governor's Institute of Vermont's Global Issues and Youth Action Program. On the third day of the program, we were given the opportunity to speak to our legislators directly. It made them seem human and approachable, that they came for us to hear what we had to say. I asked them about the rallies and protests that we, their youth constituency, were bringing to them on the state house lawn. These acquaintances, strangers, today we are here fighting for everyone. We are here to make our leaders realize that our future is in their hands. So say it with me. Say it to them. Our future is in your hands. Say it with me. Our future is in your hands. Our future is in your hands! And we need you to fight for us. Thank you. Hello, my name is Eliza Doucette. I'm 17 years old and a student at Mount Abraham Union High School in Bristol, Vermont. One of the most basic aspects of Jewish culture is partaking in Tikkun Alam, or repairing the world. The idea is that every single person has a responsibility to take care of the earth and make it a better place for future generations. We can do this with anything from small actions, like picking up trash and recycling, to larger ways such as collaborating with legislators to bring about change and in climate legislation. It doesn't matter if the actions we take are big or small. What matters is that each person is doing their best and making some sort of positive change. Remember that we are all capable of change and of growth. This principle of Tikkun Olam applies to us all. Outside of faith, culture, ethnicity, and I encourage you all to carry it with you, just as I do. I remember being a young child, exploring the woods around my house. I remember spending summers at my aunt's house on a lake in Maine, listening to the wondrous calls of loons. According to the Vermont government, within the next 25 years, these loons will be gone as the effects of climate change continue to worsen. They are at risk of being another loss to the devastation we are facing, the devastation that we failed to prevent. 
I remember being a young child and looking around in wonder at the beautiful ro world around me. A world that even then was dying. I am 17 years old. I'm a child, but I was born into a crisis, so I won't stand down. I have stood on these steps far too many times, begging lawmakers to listen to youth like myself. And I will continue to do so until I feel that I live in a world where a future is a guarantee. It's fascinating to me, in a morbid way, to examine the behavior of those in charge. World leaders consistently put finance and personal gain over climate justice. It's like everyone around me is oblivious to the obvious truth that we have solutions. That's right, we know how to fix this. We know how to preserve our future. We don't need to find answers because we already have them. But no one will listen. No one is coming to help us. No one is doing anything why do we allow the leaders who we elect to set fire to our future? Is their sole job not to protect us? What happens to our right to a future to know that our goals, aspirations, and ambitions are possible? The planet is burning while we sit by and passively watch. The inaction of those in power has lasted far too long. I'm sick of waiting for lawmakers to act. It isn't my job to stand here before you all, but because those whose job it really is are incapable of doing it, I'm forced to stand up to say goodbye to my childhood and to fight so that others don't have to. On average, each decade, our lakes and our ponds thaw between one and three days sooner than the prior decade. One day doesn't seem like a lot, but that is a dramatic difference caused by a dramatic rise in the temperature. As the world heats, natural disasters, such as storms and wildfires, will worsen. People are already dying and will continue to do so. Everyone can make a difference. The truth is, action is simple. Action is terrifying. Action is based in fear and in urgency. Action is possible. I urge every single person here to start by learning. Learn about climate legislation and activism. Research solutions and begin to implement them into your lives. Speak up. Find out who your legislators are, both locally and nationally. Call them, email them, let them know that we want climate justice. And if they aren't going to fight for us, we will vote them out as soon as we turn 18. In this day and age, it's easy to lose sight of what we are fighting for. And as I conclude this speech, I want to remind you why we are all here today. Can everyone close your eyes for a second? Just stick with me. Take a deep breath. Imagine what you want the future to look like. Think about a world in which we exist free of worry about natural disasters, rising sea levels, and increasing temperature. Got that image? Okay, now open your eyes. How will you practice decone alarm? How will you repair the world? Thank you. Hello. My name is Jenna Hirschman, and I'm a junior at Essex High School. I welcome you to our seventh annual Rally for the Planet. We should be in school right now, and instead, we are here to demand a better future for ourselves. This is something I have said many times before. As I miss class to fight for something I should not need to fight for. Our leaders have failed us. Keep failing us. And I'm tired of it. 
It should not be our responsibility. We should not have to be here year after year, but we are. We showed up today and we will continue to show up until we see that our leaders care about our future. So far, I've been shown they don't care. Across the country, leaders jeopardize our future. Something I hear often in and out of the State House is that we should slow down, that we should collect data and have all the facts before we make decisions. To that I ask, what have we been doing for the last 70 years? Scientists have known and warned us about climate change for 70 years. Leaders do not do anything about this crisis except make empty promises and create goals they won't even attempt to meet. Vermont's first piece of comprehensive climate legislation was the Global Warming Solutions Act. It has been three years since the act passed. We've gotten a lot of promises since then and no solutions. The act requires Vermont to reduce greenhouse gas pollution to 40% below 1990 levels by 2030. This is legally binding and allows private citizens to, stu to sue the state if we don't meet those goals. To I'm sorry about that. To meet those goals, the Climate Council was established to make a climate, a climate action plan for Vermont's climate work for the next 70, seven years. The recommendations in the Climate Action Plan have since been ignored or vetoed. We need the Climate Council's recommendations to be passed in order to reach the required levels. We are not on track to do this. These goals are important and we must take action to meet them. As we stand here today, lawmakers debate the first real tangible climate solution in many years. The Affordable Heat Act is a bill with in-the-ground solutions for Vermonters. It's systematic change, one we desperately need. We have to change the way heating, cooling, and transportation is done in the state. Fossil fuel corporations have spent $40,000 trying to sink this bill. It worked last year when the Clean Heat Act standard, a similar bill, failed. The governor vetoed the clean heat standard last year and has it made it clear he, he means to do it again with the Affordable Heat Act. We will not stand for that. Look around. There are 500 young people from across the state here today. We showed up because we care and we will continue to demand better for ourselves. We, will, we care about our futures and we will force leaders to care about them too. We will not stand down. I am 17 years old. In many eyes, that makes me incompetent. Yet I'm here today. We are all here today, showing up. And we will continue to show up, year after year, day after day. We are angry. Angry that we have been failed over and over. Angry that our leaders don't care about us or our futures. So I'm asking them to hear this. Pass the Affordable Heat Act. Do something. Don't let your legacy be waiting until it's too late to go back. Don't let your legacy be failing us. Thank you. My name is Molly Levy, and I'm here speaking to you on behalf of Sunrise Chittenden a youth-led group based in Chittenden, Vermont. We as young people have never seen the light at the end of the tunnel. We have never experienced the relief of the other side of darkness. We have never been granted the comfort of trust and security in our futures. As young people, we are told that we must persist, that we must push back, that we must continue this fight despite the fact that by no fault of our own, it is a seemingly impossible effort. As young people, we are constantly told by adults that we must have hope. These things do not go together. For all the isolation and loss 
and a fear that we have witnessed and experienced already in our lives, it often feels that the last thing we should feel is hopeful. And yet, it has been assigned as our sole responsibility, this hopefulness. This responsibility is exhausting. It is a burden we have to bear that no generation before us has ever had to carry in such emergent circumstances. As the world slowly tears to pieces, we are expected to pick ourselves up, pull it together, and have enough hopefulness to do it all over again. The worst part is, it's true. We are hurt, we are scared, we are horrified by the terrors of watching our world crumble at the hands of people who often seem as though they're on a different planet. People who have no ears for our voices. It is true that despite this constant terror and struggle, we must persist. We must find hope and we must hold on to it. We must hold on to it like it's our last lifeline, our last chance at survival. We are constantly defined by darkness. With the sadness and fear that constantly envelops us, the mourning of a home that is slipping away right before our eyes. We cannot let this happen. We must define ourselves. Yes, it is getting dark, but that does not define us. We are stars. In a world that does everything to prevent it, we create our own hope. As it turns out, there is a light at the end of this tunnel, and that light is this hope, this relentless belief that we do have time, that we do have each other, and that that will be enough. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rabbi Michael Cohen. I'm the Rabbi Emeritus of the Israel Congregation in Manchester Center, and I teach conflict resolution at Bennington College and the Burr and Burton Academy. Since 1996, I've divided my time between our Vermont home and the Arabi Institute for Environmental Studies on Kibbutz Kitara. There we bring together college-age Israelis, Palestinians, Jordanians, Moroccans, and other international students to learn about environmental diplomacy including at our Climate Change Adaptation Center. Students from Vermont high schools, colleges, and universities have studied at the Arav Institute. Come study with us. I mention the Arav Institute not only because it stands at the intersection of conflict resolution and addressing cross-border climate change, but because it is located in the hyper-arid Arava Desert. We live here in the beautiful, forested, and watered Green Mountain State. There, trees are few, no topsoil, annual rainfall is about an inch, and the annual evaporation rate is 13 feet a year. It is so important to be exposed to different ecosystems, to understand them, and then see one's own ecosystem with fresh eyes and with a better understanding and appreciation. That environmental diversity is also a metaphor for effective political activism. It is essential to understand those who think differently. We should never be so hubris thinking we are always correct. The test is to be open to different vistas. In the Talmud, the collection of ancient rabbinic debates, rabbis were paired together who disagreed with each other. In such encounters, we allow ourselves to meet those who don't think like us. Only through such meetings can we learn to understand where they are coming from. That gives us the best chance of being successful in creating the arguments to bring about the necessary change these times demand. In the mid-1970s, a few years after the first Earth Day, when I was a senior in Ewing High School, I co-founded the first re recycling center in Ewing, New Jersey in the 1970s. I note that for a few reasons. Once an activist, always an activist. Welcome to the club. In addition, this work, particularly around the environment, is about long-term commitment that will include accomplishments and defeats. 
It can at times feel overwhelming and debilitating. Last month, United Nations General Assembly President Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces told the world, we are the last generation that can prevent irreparable damage to our planet. 11 years is all we have ahead of us to change that direction. We often hear about the greatest generation, those individuals born in the first decades after the last century who fought in World War II against huge odds to save the world for democracy. Their self-sacrifice was their hallmark. Today, we see democracy at home and abroad once again threatened. Success is neither linear nor short-term. That generation was also defined by the 1930s Depression. Every generation has its challenges, and you are no different. You will be defined by how you meet today's challenges. This is your time to become the greatest generation, and I really mean the greatest generation, for your task, our task, is simply to save the planet. So how do we do that? Five short points. One, too often we only hear about the dire conditions of the planet. At the same time, it is so important we remind ourselves of our climate change victories, learn from them, drink from them, become emboldened by them. At the end of every year, we can look up those achievements. They sustain us and give us the knowledge and energy to go forward. It is critical to remain light even if the times are heavy. It is critical to remain light even if the times are heavy. Two, listen to, learn from, and follow that great Vermont environmental prophet, Bill McKibben, the founder of 350.org. In this month's Rolling Stone magazine, he writes, it's our last shot. Here's how we take it. Climate change is ultimately a math problem. And these are the numbers that could change the end of the story. And some of it points to a way out. That is to say, we have the knowledge and the answers. The test is about being effective in making those the compass that guides us. Three, which leads to the next point. The environment is a sophisticated, interconnected, beautiful system. And so our path needs to be sophisticated, interconnected, and beautiful. Related our way to resolving climate change, or rather our approach to those who we need to bring along to make the necessary changes to repair our world must not be reduced to slogans and denunciations so we feel good. This is not about feeling good. This is about being compelling, including serious engagement of those who may not think like us. Four, if you want to change the world, include economics, history, and psychology in the classes you take, the books and articles you read. They are the keys to unlocking the doors to transformation. And finally, just last week, former New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and climate change activists gave her final speech to the New Zealand Parliament. She pointedly closed by saying, I cannot determine what will define my time in this place, but I do hope I've demonstrated something else entirely. That you can be anxious, sensitive, kind, and wear your heart on your sleeve. You can be a mother or not, an ex-Mormon or not, a nerd, a crier, a hugger. You can be all of these things, and not only can you be here, but you can lead. It is your time and responsibility to lead. By being here this morning on the steps of the Vermont Legislature, it is clear that you have accepted that burden and recognize the agency that you all have. A famous Rabbi Hillel from days long, long ago said, if I am not for myself, who is for me? When I am for myself, what am I? That is to say, we need to care for our needs, but if that is all we do, who will help with the requirements of others? And what does that make us if we are so limited in our focus? That insight of Hillel recognizes we live in concentric circles of yearning and obligations that start with each of us and expand out in a web of interdependence as stated by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. All humanity is tied together. All life is interrelated, 
and we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. Hillel concludes his saying by asking, if not now, when? Gathered here today, at this moment, you clearly state now is the time to act as you take up the mantle of the protector generation. That is your destiny. Shabbat Shalom, Ramadan Karim. Have a restful and meaningful weekend. Thank you. Hi, everyone. That concludes our speeches for now. Thank you all for listening. We are now going to be taking a group picture. So if everyone could please make their way to this set of steps and the concrete so that we can take a group picture, we would appreciate it. Thank you.
up the government. Courage to knock down the door of the government. Courage to knock down the door of the government. Courage to lie. And now, all the way from Mexico, our fabulous flight instructor, Ms. Teresa Camus, will instruct us in the art of flying. If you would like to join, now is your moment. Muy buenas tardes. Por favor, quien quiera aprender a volar, pase de Por favor, a volar. Aquí. Ahí. Está muy bien. Por favor, adelante, adelante. Vengan las dos. Las dos. Acá, acá. Un poquito más cerca. Por favor. Aquí. ¿Te las puedes poner? Muy bien, ok, muy bien. Vamos a esperar. Ok, listo. Listo. Me van a observar a mí y vamos a aprender a volar. Ok, vamos a ir abajo.
this Don't make a damn name for myself Can't even say how much pain that I felt But I'm moving my alliance for trouble My spirit's really rising now Climbing out the one with the ashes Flashing news on the news daily Cool maps crashes and searching through safety The world's like a criminal that's on the dangerous I gotta say a miracle that got the place for Walk down the street and stare down my stand dog Now I'm hurting with my hands up It was bad luck
uh, please come up to the front steps here. We'd love to see you. Madison LePage. Madison LePage. Yeah, okay. Um, this next song is called Outsider Activist. This is our last song. Um, and it was written by the last group that was soundtracked before all of us come along. Came, came along. That's the word. Before all of us came along. Um, and yeah, we hope that you enjoy. Soundcheck. It's a group of high school students representing about four or five different high schools in the area. We're partnered with the Flynn Center for the Arts, and we come together to write original music that fights injustice and hate, and we try to make the place of the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. We're almost done with today, but we're going to do a couple more speeches before we wrap up. If you can come on towards the front of the State House on these steps, right in front of the podium, that would be great. Please make your way over to the steps. Janelle, Janelle, you're going to go first. All right, we're going to start speeches. Please come over to the steps so you can listen to our final three youth speakers. Okay, hi. 
Um, my name is Janelle. I'm a junior at Harwood Union High School, um, and I just want to say thank you again for being here. Um, and I would like to start off by acknowledging the land that we are all on. Um, it is the land of the Abenaki peoples um, who have and continue to steward this land that we call home. Let's not forget that this is their land um, and they are still here. So thank you. Um, starting in fifth grade, I was learning about the importance of how to be sustainable, what global warming was, why it happened, um, and that was in a class we called sustainability. While I don't remember the entirety of the class, I remember learning about sustainability seemed super fun. We got to watch Wally -E take care of chickens and eat Pete's Greens Carrots and flatbread pizza after our unit on sustainable foods. This was a class that we took throughout all of middle school and by the end of eighth grade, I remember that I found myself dreading that class because we actually had to create projects and find ways to take our own action against climate change. Three years later, and taking action still isn't as fun as watching Wally. -E. It's become frustrating and also just sad. Sad that our future is unknown and unstable, and sad that not enough of our lawmakers and voters can see that. But sad isn't why we're here. We're here because as youth, we do know that our future is looking rough and we do care. And so we're going to keep advocating and keep fighting because we deserve a healthy future. The theme of this year's rally is climate justice. If you know me, you know that I'm pretty serious when it comes to social justice. And to me, climate change is about so much more than stopping... Climate justice is about so much more than stopping climate change. It's about figuring out the best way to slow the effects of climate change down while creating equal, equal opportunities for everyone to help save our planet, no matter their race, gender, socioeconomic status, or background. For example, the Affordable Heat Act, a bill that is such a strong step in the right direction, providing affordable and sustainable heating options to help slow down our quickly heating climate. We can't fix climate change if only the privileged people have access to the tools to be more sustainable, and we need to start making our climate action actions of justice and equality and not just about money. Climate justice is about justice in our climate. It's as simple as that. It's about a broken promise called the Willow Project. The Willow Project is a perfect example of climate justice gone wrong. Some might say climate injustice. In addition to harming the planet itself, the Willow Project is also harming the people who live on this planet. While, yes, the Willow Project will eventually affect many people's lives, it is directly and disproportionately affecting the lives of indigenous people. Environmental racism is a form of institutional racism leading to landfills, incinerators, and hazardous waste disposal being disproportionately placed in communities of color. Does this ring a bell? Native people were on this land before anyone else, and yet, after all these years of systemic erasure, forced removal, lawmakers are still destroying their land and harming the people this, that live there. This needs to stop. We need more than climate action. We need climate justice. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sonia, and today I'm speaking to you as a student and as a young person. Okay, so my speech is like kind of interactive, it's not super interactive, it's not dancing or anything. Um, it's pretty simple. Everyone's just gonna close their eyes, and I'm just gonna ask a few questions, and if you agree with the statement, you can raise your hand, and if you don't wanna participate, that's also totally okay. All right, if you feel comfortable and you're ready, you can close your eyes. All right, is everyone's eyes closed? Okay, I'm just in there. All right. Raise your hand if you've ever felt discouraged or confused or overwhelmed by the current state of our environment and the direction we're heading. Raise your hand if you have ever, ever felt mad or angry or enraged by the lack of action being taken by those in charge to protect the planet and the people. Raise your hand if you've ever felt, maybe by being here, empowered and inspired to do something, to take action in some way. Raise your hand if you will not stop showing up. You will not stop showing up like you are today do not stop showing up and standing up and speaking up for the planet and its people. All right, keep your hands up, but open your eyes and look around. Everyone has their hands up pretty much. Um, we are the generation that will feel the burden of this climate crisis, that will have to live with the floods and the fires and the heat and the blizzards. But this, you, us, everyone here with their hands raised, this is how I know that we can solve this global problem. Arguably, some of the worst aspects of humanity, greed, self-interest, division, short-term profit for the few at the expense of long-term gains of many, exploitation and cruelty, injustice and ignorance, ignorance, all of that got us into this mess. Ironically, or maybe perfectly, the best aspects of human nature are going to be what gets us out. 
collaboration, honesty, compassion, empathy and accountability, solidarity, those are the tools that will solve this global problem. And we, all of the young people around the world who have been speaking up for our own future and who will not stop until that future is secured, we are going to be how this climate crisis is solved. Because despite not causing this problem and having every valid reason to disengage and feel upset and overwhelmed by this crisis, we are out here taking action. When leaders act like kids, kids become leaders. I know. I know that we can solve this problem. And I know that our generation will have a future worth living because despite how daunting it is to literally be staring down the biggest global issue of our lives, every single one of us showed up today. And I know that we will keep showing up until our future and the future of every single human being still to come is secured. We will keep showing up and standing up and speaking up. I believe in us. Thank you. All right, mine's gonna be the last speech for today. I know it's hot. You can all head out soon. My name, whoa. Oh. <laughs> Don't lean on the podium, noted. Hi everyone. My name is Miriam Sirota Winston and I'm a freshman at Montpelier High School. This is the seventh annual rally for the planet. We missed a couple years because of COVID, but that still means that we, maybe not the same people, but the same groups, the same schools, the same young people with essentially the same demands, have been here every year for seven years, standing on this lawn, continuing to demand that our leaders take action. In those years, we have made minimal progress as a state, as a nation, and as a world to slow climate change. We have not done enough, and that makes me angry because our world needs better. We demand better. I don't know if you remember COP26, but I do. I was 11 when it happened. I remember the overwhelming hope that this group of world leaders, supposedly a group of people dedicated to the well-being of their countries and the world. I remember my hope Joe Biden's presidential campaign, but I do. I remember hoping here, maybe, is a president who understands the importance of stopping climate change. Here is a president who has listened when we spoke up for our planet and for our future. I remember the hope that he would do the right thing. For the past years, we and our youth allies around the entire world have been demanding that these politicians wake up and see that we are destroying our planet. We have been hoping that they will realize that the world, that justice and equity, that our home is more important than profit and politics. COP26 failed to take the actions necessary to keep climate change from reaching catastrophic levels, and so did COP27. President Biden approved the Willow Project, a massive oil drill in Alaska, and called it climate justice. The Willow Project will put an estimated 239 million metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere during the project's 30-year lifetime. That is not climate justice. That is a broken promise. And that's why I'm angry. I am furious at the leaders who promise justice and then put profit over people and our planet. And you have the right to be angry too. You have the right to be furious. You have the right to demand better. In fact, you have to be angry. You have to stand up and fight for your future. You have to realize that as much as we continue to have hope and belief in the possibility of a brighter, more just future, we have to fight for that future. We have to hold our leaders accountable. 
Yes, this should not be our responsibility. We are students, but we are in the next generation, and sadly, it has fallen to us. Our role is important. We are not powerless. We are the powerful reminder of the next generation of who exactly our leaders are failing, who they must do better for. We will be present constantly to remind our leaders of this. And when our mere presence is not enough, we will be vocal. We will speak up. We will not let them forget what really matters. There is nothing more powerful than us together. Yes, angry and afraid, but also hopeful and driven, standing up for what our planet and our communities need. We have a chance to build a better, better future. We have a chance to stop climate change because I do believe in us. I believe that we can build a better world. I am asking our politicians in this state house to stop making excuses. I am asking them to get their priorities straight. I'm asking them to pass the Affordable Heat Act, pass the transformation reforms, and meet the Climate Action Plan goals. But I am also telling them that we will not give up. We will not let them be too busy. We will not let them have more important things to do. We will keep reminding them that we, we and our planet, are the most important things. Never forget, we are not powerless. We are hundreds, we are thousands of young people just in this state. I believe that we can build a better future together, a more just future, free of climate change. I believe in the change we can make when we stand up and work together and demand better. I believe in us. Youth Lobby if you want to be part of this movement and have a great afternoon and a great weekend.